Right people, welcome back to another roundup of iPhone 15 leaks. We have tons of tidbits, and so let's delve into it. So beginning with some info from a relatively new source, Revenga says the iPhone 15 Pro might not be all that different, specs wise, from the 14. He begins by saying the display is basically gonna be identical to the 14 Pro with it, using the same Samsung M12 panel. Now to be fair, this is not a massive issue because I don't think many complain about the 14 Pro's panel being bad, but this likely means we're not getting any increase with the brightness levels on the 15. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this, it would be appreciated. Now, another aspect I've been wondering about is whether we'll see any upgrades to the main lens on the 15 Pro, because we've heard a lot about the periscope lens on the Pro Max, but since the regular Pro isn't getting this, I have been wondering what exactly is gonna be different with the cameras on the regular Pro this year. And well, it seems like we're not getting many changes. According to this source, the main sensor is still going to be the same 48 megapixel IMX A23 sensor the 14 Pro uses, which is interesting because recently Jeff Poo told us the 15 and 15 Plus could get a new stacked 48 megapixel sensor that could improve low light shots. And so I was under the assumption the 15 Pro would also get this. However, if this source is right and the main camera is going to be exactly the same, I'm pretty sure the 15 and 15 Plus are also getting this 14 Pro sensor. Now for those doubtful about this, Shrimp Apple Pro, who's a way more credible source, has also said the 15 Pro is going to continue using the same main lens. So yes, unfortunately, this is likely to be the case. Now to be fair, for most consumers, the 48 megapixel main sensor is completely fine, but I have personally run into a big issue with the focusing because the minimum focus distance on the 14 Pro changed to 20 centimeters, which is a few centimeters less than the iPhone 13 Pro, and as a result, I've noticed the 14 Pro switches to the much softer ultra wides when I try to focus on something close to the phone. If I force it to stay on the main lens, it would just refuse to focus, and the subject ends up being blurry. Now, I was hoping this would be fixed with the 15, and some kind of sads, that's not the case, but I guess Apple's fix to this is to just use the ultra wides, even if it's a lot softer. Now, thankfully, we can still expect the A17 to be three nanometers, which should hopefully give us a major performance and efficiency upgrades, and I'm specifically excited for the potential battery upgrades, because the 14 Pro definitely felt kind of like a downgrade in this aspect, since the always on display was very power hungry this year, so hopefully coupled with a bigger battery, the A17 does give us massive battery gains. We also apparently are getting eight gigs of RAM, which I personally find overkill, but I'm sure I'm gonna get comments from you guys claiming you absolutely need this, so I guess your wish actually might come true. I have also theorized in the past that with 8 gigs of RAM we could see 8K support, since we already have the 48 megapixel sensor that of course can technically produce 8K footage, and so maybe the additional RAM could be handy for processing that, and maybe that would be one of the bigger upgrades we see with both the 15 Pro Max and the regular 15 Pro. Let's now move on to MagSafe because we have another source telling us Apple's been prototyping colored versions of their MagSafe parks, similar to the colored MagSafe cables Apple offers with their MacBooks. Now this is certainly not a revolutionary change, but it would be cool considering most Apple accessories only come in white. I guess the only issue Apple might face is the fact iPhone colors change on a yearly basis compared to Macs. But if they release the parks in the standard colors they have each year, like Space Black, Silver, Midnight, Product Red, etc., that certainly would be nice. And honestly, there is a small chance more people get these MagSafe parks just because they come in fancy colors, so I definitely would not be surprised if this does materialize. Now, previously, we had heard about 15 watt MagSafe speeds coming to non Apple accessories, since remember, right now, every third party accessory on the market can only charge at 7.5 watts, which is not that good for today's standards, and so this would be a welcome change. And while thankfully this has now been corroborated by more sources, so the chances of this happening are much higher now, and I also forgot to mention in my previous video regarding this that the new Qi 2 standards has officially adopted MagSafe, which means even non-Apple devices could get this tech, and so it kind of makes sense why Apple's giving third parties access to the full 15 watt speeds, 
Since MagSafe is going to be more widespread, moving to iPhone 16, German has confirmed that what Ross Young told us about bigger displays coming to these iPhones is very much going to be the case. So now we can be somewhat sure we're getting 6.3 inches and 6.9 inches on the 16 Pro series. And I'm looking forward to this because as I've said previously, I think 6.3 inches could be the sweet spot for me because I'm considering downsizing from the Max since I'm getting fed up with the size but I also still want the incredible battery life, so the 6.3 inch Pro could give me the best of both worlds. Anyways, German says this size increase could help accommodate better camera tech and also bigger batteries, and that's exactly what we hear from this Weibo source, who firstly says we can expect the periscope lens on the regular 16 Pro, which is awesome, but also the main sensor should be 12% larger with this, now being 1 by 1.14 inches in size, which is quite a bit larger than the current, 1 by 1.28 inch sensor on the 14 Pro and of course the 15 Pro. So yes, if you want the big camera improvements, it might seem like the iPhone 16 is the one to get, but I'll be honest guys, every year we hear about next year's iPhones being a revolutionary upgrade and then they end up being the same year over year minor refresh we see quite often in the tech space, so I would not get too excited by this news. Plus, the 14 Pro sensor was massive compared to the 13 Pro, but of course, in most lighting conditions, you could not tell much of a difference. So everything ultimately comes down to optimization, because even if we don't get a new main lens on the 15 Pro, as long as it gets an updated version of Smart HDR that's better optimized, we could see some decent improvements. And while we know how much of a mess my HDR right now is on the 14 and 13 series, there's a lot of overprocessing, so I'm praying the 15 does get big upgrades in this department. Finally, we do have some very early CADs for iPhone 16 Ultra from not so credible source, Sonny Dixon, and it shows how much taller the display is gonna be because it's now 6.9 inches. Now this basically illustrates why I'm considering downsizing because even now with the current 6.7 inch size, and yes, I know reachability is a thing, but I do still want a device that's a little more compact. Now for those wondering exactly how much larger the 16 Ultra is gonna get, it's going to increase in height by five millimeters, and the width is gonna increase by 0.5 millimeters. So at least the phone's not getting that much wider, which is great because the 14 Pro Max could be a little more narrow. However, I do want to emphasize guys, it's very rare we get credible early CADs about next year's iPhone at this point in time. And so I would not be surprised if these dimensions are completely wrong. Just take everything with a grain of salt. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.